Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to be using Protopy to recreate all the micro animations that you see when you open a performer page on Spotify. And don't worry, I know there's a lot going on here, but I promise it is way easier than it looks. Let's get started. As always, I already explored my designs from Figma to Protopy to make the video a little shorter. And now that we are here, the first things that we need to do is to make the scroll effect. And we want the user to be able to scroll the big title or the name of the artist and the, the container that contains all the songs of the performer. So we come here and select the, the name and the songs and group these under, under a container. Now that we have the container, we make it scrollable by clicking on scroll here on the right menu and it's ready to select as vertical scroll. So now also we need to make sure that we have some content outside of our container that can be scroll. So we can adjust this border toward the line of the navigation bar. We come here in preview and check that we have now the scroll effect with some nice bounce effect too. But also we want the user to be able to scroll by touching this area of the of the screen. So we need to adjust the the container size again. We move the stop border to the corner of the screen, and then we want to push the con the content again to the original position. And it was three hundred. Now we go back to preview and check that the scroll effect is working and the user can touch on any part of the screen and also have this bounce effect. The main trigger that we're going to use is chain because all the micro animations depend on the position of the scroll. So to capture this scroll value, the first thing that we need to do is to create a variable and we're going to call it scroll. And we want this, this variable to be a number. Now that we have the variable, we can create a trigger to take that value and save it on the, on the variable. And that trigger will be detect. We want to detect the scroll position of the container. So we pick container and we look for scroll. And now we want to assign this value to our variable that we just created. And the value that we want to assign is we click on plus here, we look the container, and then we look for scroll offset. And that will give us the offset of the scroll. Now we can test this variable by clicking on the debug option here and we'll go to preview. And we can see we are capturing the offset of the scroll. Now that we are capturing and saving the offset of the scroll, we can start adding the other animations. And we can start by adding the animations when I scroll down. And here we have two animations. First, we want this image of the performer to enlarge depending on the position of the, of the scroll. And also to make the title vanish depending also on the position of the scroll. And for that, we're going to add a trigger called chain. And these will be linked to the scroll variable. And now we can we can scale our picture of the performer. We can look for the picture here. And now, depending on the scroll position, I already took these values. So I know that I, we need to go for a scroll from 0 to minus 300. And we want these values to be the initial values of the picture. The initial width is 375 and the initial height is 370. We can measure that just by clicking on the picture here, you know, 375, 370. So we come back to scale and we want these. You can test different numbers, but I, I test 700 for both and it worked very well. So now we'll go back to preview and these should be working. And now we can see that the performer Im image is enlarging depending on the position of the scroll. Now let's work on the on the title to make it vanish depending also on the scroll. So we come here 
on chain again and we want to work with opacity and here we look for the the performer name container this is the performer name and the scroll i already test this scroll and it should go to from zero to minus 100 you can test other values and you can choose whatever you prefer but it works pretty well always zero and 100 and the opacity should go from zero no sorry from 100 to zero we go back to preview and as you can see here we have the animations when the users scroll down. Now we can start working on the animations that happen when the user scroll up. And we have a lot of things going on at the same time here. But we're going to start with the big rectangle that it goes on top of the picture. This is basically a rectangle that has a solid color. And we want this to go from an opacity 0 to 100. So we're going to use chain again. And to, uh, to understand like how what scroll positions we want to correlate with uh, an opacity of two from zero to hundred, we want to start from zero and we want to get a hundred on opacity when the scroll comes to two hundred. So we use chain again. We look here for opacity and we're gonna choose the big rectangle that it goes on top of the picture. And as we said, these scrolls should go from zero to 200 and the opacity should go from zero to 100. We come to preview and when I start scrolling, we can see that we have one solid color underneath. Now we can work on the opacity of the header because at a certain scroll level, we want this header to be solid so that all the content that is scrollable, scrollable goes underneath this header. And again, we go to we come here to preview to see what are these scroll values that we want to change with the opacity. So we want these scroll values to go from 200 to 220. So right before the letters go down the header, we want this header to be solid. So from 200 to 220, we come here again on chain. We look for opacity and here we select our rectangle that is in our header. And we want this scroll to go from 200 to 220. And we want the opacity, of course, to go from 0 to 100. Now we test these in preview. We scroll up, 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 and right before it goes down the header, the header is solid. Okay, now we can work on the performer name that goes on the on the header. And here we have the text here, and basically it contains the same text that goes in our big title here. And the initial state is we know the opacity of zero. And this element has two animations. It goes with an opacity of zero to a hundred and also had a short vertical movement that moves these to the same line of our back bottom here. So we can start with the opacity. Um so opacity here we check we check our performer name. And here we need again the, the scroll values. So we can come here and this should actually go from when all the text is covered until a certain level. So we're going to go from 258 to 300 to have an opacity and a vertical movement. So 258. 258 to 300. Sorry, this should be 258 and should have an opacity from 0 to 100. Let's go to preview. And it seems to be working well. And also, let's add the movement here. On the response movement, the performer is already selected. And we want these to go from 71 to 55. So we come here again, move. We know that this range for the scroll goes from 258 to 300. We are, we're not going to touch the X position, but Y goes from 71 to 
55. We go back to preview and now it moves and half the opacity goes from zero to 100. Now we can focus on the back button here. And again, this element has two animations. The color of the background, now that is black, needs to go from black to the color of the header. And we also have some short horizontal movement of the, of the arrow from the original position to around this position. So let's start with the color change. So we choose the back element, and now we look for the response color. And now for the scroll uh, position, we go back here to preview and we want this to start a little earlier. So we're gonna choose a position of 150 and to right before the letter goes under the, the header, and that's 220. So the range for scroll is 150 to 220. And we want the color to go from black, there is a green color, to the color of the header. I already saved this color here, but you can check the code here. So now we check on preview, we scroll up, and we see that the color goes from black to the color of the header. Now we can add the horizontal movement. We look for move. The back button is already selected. The range, we're gonna use the same and so we 150 to 220 and we are not going to touch the y location now we're only going to focus on the x so we come here check the original position is 14 and we want these to move to 4. so click and move here it goes from 14 to 4 come to preview again and as we can see the colors change and also we have a short horizontal movement that is working very well now we have almost all of our animations. If we come here again to preview, we see that we have the animations when it scroll up, when the scroll down. The only thing missing here is our play button, and we're going to work on that right now. The main issue with this play button is to calculate the scroll positions to use the tame trigger again. And for that, to calculate that, we're going to need to make this opacity 100. And we also gonna need to move the play element inside the container just temporarily. And we're gonna go to preview here and we're gonna see this call precision that we need. We want this play button to stick on the header once this call position is 313. And for the rest of the the scroll positions, we want these to, to go with a, with a container. So we have the stream, the top stream to this 313, and we also know that the initial position of the play button when the scroll is zero is 385. So we come here, we add a response move. We we need to move our play play element again outside of the container. And now we're gonna need the range, and we know that the top range is 313 and to make sure that the play button goes with the scroll all the way down we're going to use a 3 minus 300 as a lower limit here and y should be since we know that the initial position when scroll is zero the initial position of the play button is 385 the same will happen with the with the top level of 313 so it will be 385 minus 313 and we have 72 and for the lower level of our play button will be minus 300 or 300 for us plus 385 that is the initial position of the of the play button so it will be 685 now we come back here in preview and sorry we're just gonna make the opacity of the header again zero because we don't need it anymore and we come to preview as we can see here, when it touched the header, the middle of the play button touched the header, it stays there. And then when it scroll down, it's go, it goes down all the way down with a container. So that's it. That's, those are all the animations that we have inside a performer page on Spotify. As you can see here, there's so many things going on at the same time here, but the chain trigger is so powerful that allowed us to do all of those things with only two triggers.
And that's all I have for today. Hopefully you learned something useful. And I plan to do more of these videos where I use Protopy to replicate real apps. So if you have an app in mind, please leave a comment with the name of this app. And if you want to learn more about Protopy and Figma, see you in my next video.